I've had many experiences with orcas off the south coast of Iceland. And there you got to see them in their natural environment. You got to see them majestic in every way. They're wide-ranging predators, traveling 100 miles a day and diving as much as 300 feet to forage. And they live in tightly knit family groups, often not leaving their birth family the whole lives. And in many of these families, the moms call all the shots. We're talking about a level of, of emotional bonding with orcas, beluga whales, and other cetaceans that is beyond the par of what we experience as humans. Feelings and emotions come into play in orca and cetacean psychology in a very intense and very fundamental way. They have culture, they have dialects, they have interesting communication systems and a big brain. They're right up there with us. When you look at the orca brain through an MRI image, the neocortex, the thinking part of the brain, the gray matter, is actually more convoluted than that of the human brain. For a brain like that, there is nothing to do in a concrete tank. There are actually 3,000 whales and dolphins in captivity around the world. There are 57 orca, more than 300 beluga, and they live in very small tanks, often not any deeper than the whales are long. A concrete tank is like a, an auditory hall of mirrors. At first, they're going to get back a lot of echoes, and eventually, they're going to realize there's nothing to echolocate on. And at that point, they simply shut down. And in captivity, they live in artificial families. Mothers and calves are separated based solely on commercial interest. Captive whales rarely live more than 20 years. Fewer than 50% lived more than four years after capture. The captive industry makes the point that they're providing education about orcas to all of their audiences. I think it's anti-educational. It teaches kids that we as humans should dominate them as opposed to anything about what they are as animals, what their culture is. The reason China and other countries are capturing orcas and other cetaceans and putting them in concrete tanks is because of the success of marine parks in this country. One could lose hope. One could say there are more and more animals being captured and the numbers we have today will, will be nothing compared to what could happen in the future. But we have to put our hope in children to stand up and say no, and we'll demand of their parents, no matter where they live on the planet, that we treat these animals with understanding and care and keep them in the wild. As the public ethic around keeping whales and dolphins in captivity changes, people are demanding that the shows stop and that the animals have an opportunity to live in more natural environments. Most of the animals today in captivity were born in captivity. So releasing them would be in many ways tragic because they do not have the skills to survive in the wild. The best solution is to build natural seaside sanctuaries where captive whales and dolphins can live in an environment as close to their natural habitat as we can provide. They'll have a sandy bottom with critters, fish, and crabs with whom to interact. They'll have birds on the surface to chase. And they will have space, more than a hundred times more than the largest performance tank in captivity. The captivity industry is looking at us. The public has the power to end this suffering. Sanctuaries have been built for elephants, for gorillas, and big cats. And now is the time to create sanctuaries for whales and dolphins. There is another way. Here it is.